Good morning. Good afternoon for some of you. Good evening for some of some of you others. I was hit with a passage recently in the Bible. It was a vegan that, that talks about being a Christian. I wanted to just witness to you um, this particular situation, not talking bad about the vegan that, that did say this, which they were correct, but there's some context that's missing here. Um, they referenced Isaiah 66. It says um, in Isaiah 66, there are... <clears throat> But whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a person, and whoever offers a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck. Whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents pig's blood, and whoever burns memorial incense is like one who worships an idol. They have chosen their ways, and they delight in their abominations. So I also will choose harsh treatment for them, and will bring them to what they dread. Now. This is the vegan propaganda that I'm talking about. Let's go back to see where this came from. Why is the Lord saying this? So if I turn back to Isaiah 65, and I see what leads up to this, instead of just using what particular passage you want to use to scare people about eating nutrient animal products, go back to Isaiah 65 before this even began. Judgment and salvation. I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here I am. Here I am. All day long I have held out my hands. To, to an obstinate people who walks in ways not good, pursuing their own imaginations. A people who continually provoke me to my very face, offering sacrifices in gardens and burning incense on altars of brick who sit among graves and spend their nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and those pots hold broth and impure meat, who say, keep away, don't come near me, for I am too scared for you. Such people are smoke in my nostrils, a fire that keeps burning all day. See it, in, see, it stands written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will pay back in full. I will pay back into their laps, both their sins and the sins of their ancestors, says the Lord, because they burned sacrifices on the mountains and defied me on the hills. I will measure into their laps the full payment for their former deeds. This is what the Lord says, as when juice is still found in the cluster of grapes and people say, don't destroy it, there is still a blessing in it. So will I do in behalf of my servants. I will not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, those who will possess my mountains. My chosen people will inherit them, and there will my servants live. Sharon will become a pasture for flocks in the valley of Acre, a resting place for herds for my people who seek me. But as, but as for you who forsake the Lord and forget my holy mountain, who spread a table for fortune and fill bowels of mixed wine for destiny, I will destroy I will destine you for the sword. I will destine you for the sword, sorry. And all of you will fail in the slaughter. For I called, but you did not answer. I spoke, but you did not listen. You did evil in my sight, and you chose what displeases me. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. My servants will eat, but you will go hungry. My servants will drink, but you will go thirsty. My servants will rejoice, but you will be put to shame. My servants will sing out the joy of their hearts, but you will cry out from an anguish of heart and wail in brokenness of spirit. You will leave your name for my chosen ones to use in their curses. The sovereign Lord will put you to death, but to his servants he will give another name. Whoever invokes a blessing in the land will do so by the one true God. Whoever takes an oath in the land will swear by the one true God. For the past troubles will be forgotten and hidden from my names. He's speaking about unholy doings. These people eating meat and stuff not in his name. These people um, practicing other types of, of, of mysterious uh, beliefs and stuff like that not in his name. People cursing him and doing things but yet still eating meat. Unholy meat that is not in his name is what he's talking about. New heavens and new earth. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. 
But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take a delight in my people. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard in no more. Never again will there be in never again will there be in it, in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. The one who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere child. The one who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build a house and others live in them, or plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree will so be the days of my people. My chosen ones will will long enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain, nor will they bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain. Judgment and hope. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build for me? Where will my resting place be? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. Those are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humbled, land contrite in spirit, and who tremble at my word. But whoever sacrifices a bull is like one who kills a person, and whoever offers a lamb is like one who breaks a dog's neck. Whoever makes a grain offering is like one who presents pig's blood, and whoever burns memorial and incense is like one who worships an idol. They have chosen their own ways, and they delight in their own abominations. So I will choose harsh treatment for them and will bring them to what they dread. For when I called, no one answered. For when I spoke, no one listened. They did evil in my sight and chose what displeases me. Hear the word of the Lord, you who tremble at his word, your own people who hate you and exclude you because of my name, have said the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. Yet they will be put to shame. Hear that uproar from the city, hear that noise from the temple. It is the sound of the Lord repaying the enemies for all they deserve. That passage was not about everybody. That passage is doing things not in the name of the Lord, and those people will suffer because of their choosing. So if you encounter somebody saying the Bible says, well, if you eat animal products and you eat, you, you eat meat or whatever in general, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says don't kill an ox. Don't, don't offer a lamb because it's just like breaking a dog's neck. That is not what it's saying. It's saying for those of you who sin and do not do these things in the name of the Lord, do not believe this is the Lord's creation. He has made this, so this is what makes it holy. You are going to be the ones that suffer but still choose to do so. Oh, man, this is crazy. Look at this. Here, I'm reading the Bible. I'm reading the Bible, and look what rolls in. The storm. storms here and all the stuff flying off the trees and pounding the top of the, the house so that passage was not about not eating meat that passage was about people that are not believers eating meat I'm not saying this is for everybody I know some of you don't believe I do believe uh, I treat everybody fairly I treat everybody equal on Sundays I like to give something to my Christian uh, my fellow Christian uh, subscribers here um, that's just what I like to do uh, I'm a fellow Christian and uh, I like to know what people are talking about. Even if you're not a believer and you want to know if it's true, is what they're saying actually true about the Bible? Pick up a Bible and read it. Actually look at what it says. If I took what they said in that one little passage alone, it makes it look like everybody's sinful. Everybody's dying. Everybody's going to die because they eat meat. But if you read the context that led up to it, you'll see they're lying. They're using it at their own discretion instead of seeing exactly what the Lord means. Do the things in your life and eat the foods that you eat to nourish your body in His name. And if you do that, you don't have anything to worry about. Man was given dominion over the land. All things on this land, green 
animals, it doesn't matter what it, what it was. It says in the Bible, it was it's to be used to nourish our body. Those who eat meat, meat do that in their own favor. Those who do, do not eat meat and just eat vegetables, it shows signs of weakness because they do not believe. Now, do I wholeheartedly believe that? In a sense, I do. But I'm still trying to figure out exactly what everything means. But that passage alone that was thrown at me, there's the breakdown of it. There is the what's leading up to it so you don't get confused like I was confused. There is your reading. Be blessed, guys. Keto on, carnivore on. Remember, this is your life. You've got to live it. Try to do it the healthy way. God bless. Happy Sunday.